Hi, my name is Trevor Peterson. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Gear. I also am our lead product designer. Historically, our products have been focused on primarily the nature and wildlife photography to market. But you're not always out in the wild. You spend a lot of time in the city as well. So I'd like to introduce our newest product to the Kickstarter community, the Kaboko City Commuter. This is our first bag that's designed for life in the city for the urban-based content creator. It's our first roll-top bag, our first side access bag, and our first rear panel access bag. But while it's a bag with many firsts, it also stays true to the Gurgir Gear ethos and has a number of design features that we've been known for for close to 15 years. Dimension Poly and VX21 sailcloth material, durable YKK zippers, bulletproof construction, which I will show you as we go through this bag, and most importantly, a focus on very clean, conscious design and weight. We design lightweight products. This bag is 3.68 pounds. Let's go and uh, let's show you what it can hold. This bag is designed primarily for a mirrorless system. If you will notice, it's quite shallow. And the reason for that is we wanted to design a bag where your camera stays well padded, both laterally and vertically. So a shallow weight means the camera doesn't bounce in this direction. You'll see what I mean when I open the bag up. As you'll see here, we have a very complete Sony mirrorless kit. 2A7R bodies, 16 to 35 2A G Master, 24 to 70 2A G Master, and an 8514 G Master. Two circular polarizers, a 77 and an 82, a little battery for the uh, iPhone, and we'll get to this compartment in a second. Let's, let's take the cameras out. First off here in the main camera compartment, we have an A7R and a 2470 2A, and what you see here is uh, this is very well sized for this particular setup. 8514, notice the hood is on. 247028, also notice the hood is on. Second A7R body. 7782 mil circular polarizers. and an anchor power bank for the iPhone. Can never have too much power. And let's, uh, let's go into the lid here and show you all the tech that we have packed in the lid. 13 inch MacBook Pro. This will fit up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro and obviously it'll fit the current 14 inch MacBook Pro as well. And the, uh, the larger size iPad Pro. You'll see we have a felt lining here for the iPad Pro a lip to prevent your iPad and laptop from falling out when you open the bag, and Fidlock magnetic buckles to keep everything secure. Also of note is the pockets use a mesh. So what that means is whatever's in the pockets, you can see clearly, which is one of those little things that's very convenient, but being able to see exactly what's in there just speeds up your workflow, makes it more efficient. And you'll notice that these are sized to fit up to 82 millimeter filters. You'll also notice this blue piping around the openings of the bag. This is a Gurrigir signature in our signature blue. And um, what it does is prevents you from dropping your equipment. So what I mean by that is when you close the bag, you'll see here and here, I can see blue. That means the bag's open. When I zip the bag up, can't see any blue, you know your bag's closed. So when you use this bag for a while, when you use any of our products for a while, uh, you just get used to, it's a muscle memory thing, you get used to zipping the bag up and noticing if it's blue or black. As long as you don't see blue, you know your bag's closed and then you can pick the bag up, swing it on your shoulder. Um, this is one of those very small things that makes a really big difference. Nobody wants to drop equipment and we all tend to work quite quickly at times. 
And so having a visual cue to make sure the bag's closed is a huge benefit. Also, while we're looking at the back panel, there's a luggage pass-through here. If you'll notice, this pass-through means the bag sits this way on a luggage handle, which basically means the luggage handle rests about here. The reason we designed it that way, it means you can get at whatever you have in the roll top without things falling out. If the luggage pass-through was designed the other way, like this, you wouldn't be able to access the roll top without everything falling out. So it's purposely designed that way to be efficient when traveling. So now I'm gonna repack it real quick and then illustrate the, uh, the side pocket functionality. And as you can see from the rear panel access, what this means is two things. One, you can put the bag down. And so if you're working in a snowy environment or a muddy environment or just, you know, the New York City subway or something like that, and it, it's a little dirty on the ground, you can put the bag down on the ground and access from the back and not get your back dirty. The second uh, feature of rear panel access is when you've got this closed up and on your back, it's very hard to open the back panel when you're wearing the bag, so your equipment is quite secure. Speaking of secure, you'll also notice um, these are lockable zippers. So, you know, any standard travel lock will fit there and lock the, uh, the back panel when you're traveling or if you have to leave the bag in a hotel room or something like that. One other feature that I'd like to point out while, while we're looking at the back of the bag is the number of bar tack stitches across these shoulder straps. Um, there's five rather generous bar tacks. The reason for that is the most stress on a shoulder strap is at this point here. People tend to pick up a bag by one shoulder strap and sling it on their back, and that puts an awful lot of stress in this area here. So we've basically sewn an extra reinforcement across this area to ensure rigidity of the shoulder straps for a long time. Now, I'd mentioned this was our first roll top bag, our first rear panel access bag, and our first side panel access bag. I wanna show you a couple of things on the side panel. I'm gonna illustrate it from above here. So the side panel access door is a feature that many of you have asked for in our bags. If you'll notice, my hand fits very well here. So initially, if you look at the way this bag is packed, it looks like we didn't measure this correctly. Um, this is deliberately designed to have extra room so you have room to get your hand in. When you're swinging a bag across and you're using a side panel to get the camera out, there are some other bags on the market that don't leave room for the hand. And so while the, while the camera is quite snug in there, you actually can't get in and get a good grip on the camera. And uh, this is obviously expensive kit. You want to make sure you've got a grip on it when you take it out. And then we've included, uh, I never know where to put my lens cap, so... There you go, lens cap pocket. It's a little detail, but it makes a big difference in everyday usage. One other thing I wanted to point out is, if you, as you'll see, um, the camera compartment is part of the main structure of the bag. And early prototypes of this bag, we actually used a cube system. The reason we shelved that idea and went with structure in the bag is there's a significant amount more structural integrity when you build the bag purpose built for this equipment. And one of the areas where it's particularly important is here around the side door. What we found was having a camera cube, uh, the cube moves, the cube has to have a door on the side, and then that door needs to connect to this door. You know, for lack of a better way to put it, there's just a lot going on. So this solution allows more rigidity around the seam, which means the zipper is easier to use. This is purpose built. And what that means is it just, the whole system is, is cleaner and more structurally sound. And then lastly, you know, if you, you don't want to use the whole camera compartment, we provide a mountain of dividers. You can partition it off in other ways to, to use this for everyday equipment as well, if you'd like. All of the straps have strap keepers. We just don't like having loose straps flopping around, they get in the way. And so the straps for the shoulder straps, and uh, this tie-down strap are Velcro. And on the top, which I'll get to in a second, they're magnetic. On this side, as you'll see, we have a tripod attached. This is in the standard configuration of the bag. The tripod feet fit into this expanding pocket. 
And this tie down strap holds everything in place. This pocket is magnetic and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. One feature I'd like to point out on this buckle is it is a locking buckle. So what that means is it doesn't slide. So when your tripod is strapped in, it stays in place. The only way to release this tension is to press the center and then it slides. Where this pocket really shines is in carrying a water bottle. This is a mere 680 mil Gurry Gear water bottle. Uh, it was actually, this pocket was actually designed around the, this particular bottle. Um, let's see that again. The pocket is magnetic and it snaps into place. And so what that means is you have a nice clean line if you don't have a water bottle in your bag. And when you need one, just pop it in. When you don't, you don't have a big saggy pocket on the side. And now we turn to the roll top. The roll top closes with Fidlock magnetic fasteners. Very quick, very convenient. You can do it with one hand. Additionally, the strap keepers are magnetic. The, uh, the roll top adds approximately six liters of space and is also magnetic. And the pièce de résistance in here, we've got a full Sony 100 to 400. So that gives you an idea of just how big this top compartment is. Additionally, it has mesh pockets with Velcro on each of the four sides. So there's a massive amount of organization in that top pocket. Um, and because we didn't just use camera cubes, we built structure into the entire bag. This top pocket up to the top seam of the bag is as padded as the rest of the camera compartment. And so there's no problem taking a lens like this and popping it up top. Or for your analog enthusiasts out there, you can fit your everyday film camera. Okay, and now let's turn our attention to the front of the bag. This is an urban bag, so the branding is very subtle, black on black. Um, we have our signature Gurry Gear zipper pulls, which are very easy to use. For those that uh, spend time in inclement weather, if you're wearing gloves, it's very easy. These two pockets styled after our, our original Kaboko line of products maintain the silhouette of the brand. But here, these are purpose-built accessory pockets for the city commuter. One feature I'd like to point out before we open those up is here and here are attachment points for our optional tripod straps, which allow you to mount a tripod down the center of the bag, which is obviously excellent for weight distribution. And also the, 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 uh, the webbing at the base here is lined with a reflective tape. So if you're riding a bike or if you're just, you know, out walking in the dark, this is reflective and so it's an added le level of security. Um, but, you know, it's, it's black, so we've kept it subtle in, in line with the, uh, the overall bag design. Let's start with the, uh, the left pocket first. You'll see that uh, all of our bags have a light gray interior. Camera equipment is black. It's very hard to see that against a black interior. It's very straightforward to see that against a light interior. And um, these pockets are designed for our optional Etc. products. So this is an Etc. XS with my cable kit for the electronics. This is a, a Satechi 90 watt charger and then charging cables for the iPad, the iPhone, and the MacBook Pro, all in one handy little case that fits perfectly in this pocket. Um, this is our XS. Our small is a little longer and obviously also fits in there. Some people use that for a pano kit. So if you're a real estate photographer and you're taking home interiors, it's a perfect spot for your, for your panning clamp and uh, your nodal slide. Two pockets here. And uh, I tend to put my batteries on this side. I put fresh in these pockets. And on this side, I'll put used so I know which are charged and which aren't. So there's three Sony batteries in here. Um, we have pulls on all the zipper pulls, so if you are wearing gloves, they're easy to access. And now moving to the right-hand side pocket. 
Uh, obviously here, as mentioned, I have a dead battery. So I put charged on this side, dead on this side, so I know the charging status. Um, my handy Gurry Gear lens cloth, keep things clean. And small detail, but we ship this in a plastic case so that the cloth itself stays clean, which is good for your lenses, obviously. We have an RFID shield here, which is a radio frequency shield, which prevents theft of um, things like credit card data and passport and biometric passport data. So, passport, there's a couple of pens. Uh, and then here's a small design feature, which uh, we think is quite useful. The keys are on a lanyard up top, and the memory card wallet is on a longer lanyard. And what that means is they don't bunch up on top of each other. So the memory card wallet has its own space and some room to move, and the, and the keys are up top. Uh, it's just, it's a little convenience thing. Then we have a side pocket here for an optional rain cover. The material is waterproof. The zippers are not, they're very water resistant. And so if you're out in a, you know, in a light rain, you're totally fine. If you're in a torrential downpour, it's better to err on the side of caution and use a rain cover. In this rain cover pocket is a hidden detail, which is this tiny little pocket here, which houses an Apple AirTag. Um, it'll also fit a tile. But having a hidden tracking device on your bag is very simple modern day security.